Hey, you will learn a lot now. If I wear my dinner gown, maybe when I get to the church here, you might begin to wonder. It will be beautiful, outstanding. You're not going to see any. I'm not that kind of pastor. No, I'm not. But yet you will like it. Please, let's be free and be good. Well, I want to believe that all the people who tie their tie, your husband is not here. Because you're not looking sexy. You're not looking sexy. You should look appealing. And the sitting position, I really don't like because I would have loved it in such a way that you sit looking at each other or the way he crosses his hand please let your hand be on her shoulder you can be massaging you can be touching her while the message is going on it will digest better you will understand me better why did you come with your baby whose baby is that why now because no, you don't have to bring a child. You don't have to bring a child. You think they don't know? A woman brought um, her two children, and she told me that um, every day, the older boy that is three, please let's not make noise. The older boy that is three will go and mount on the younger sister that is two, and be shaking his waist. Pastor Choma pray. I say, I'm not praying. That's not prayer topic. You tell me about your home. Where do you live? She said they live in a room apartment. I say, how do you sleep together? Mommy, we wait until they sleep. <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> I laugh in a half year, a half year dialect. We wait until they sleep. And then we meet and wake up. Well, take your children back. Don't invite them when you're not ready for marriage. You're not in a competition with anybody. You must not marry now. I want to marry at 29. What do you have? I saw a handsome boy downstairs. And I said, who is this boy? They said, it's pastor's son. There are children you would see. To have children will become a desire. And not when you bring your child. I don't know whether the child is in the village or the child is in Lagos. Children are to be taken care of, to be nurtured. You, you, look at how expensive baby milk is. So eat well and do exclusive breastfeeding for six months. The child will be healthy. If you don't have money for milk, you don't have money for baby food, leave them in heaven. You don't need them. There's no award in giving birth 20, 10, 8, 9. Who are you competing with? It's not about having them. It's about taking care of them. Have children in such a way that anywhere you want to send them, you send them there. The kind of school you want your children to go, you can afford it. I don't want to use me as an example, but I turn around and all I want is what I see that is happening in the lives of my two children. Don't bring them and punish them. And then you keep telling us that was how your father did your father was then, many years back. If you're repeating exactly he did, then you're, you're not, you're, you didn't progress. Now, let's talk about sex. Let's talk about love making. You know, God in his infinite mercies gave the man the male organ. He gave the man the male organ and gave the woman the female organ. One penetrates into the other one. That's how children are born. So sex was part of God's creation. Genesis 1, 31. 
you must make love. God made it. And love is so sweet that the sweet Holy Spirit inspects it. He monitors it. That was how he saw that Onan released the sperm outside. He got angry and killed him. He took him away. So God ordained sex. He saw that everything that he made was good. Every organ in the body of the woman, perfect. Do you know that every part of a woman's body is a sensitive place to touch? We will read Songs of Solomon. Her breast, fantastic. That is too powerful SMA gold on somebody's chest. So you don't even need to buy it. It's right there. God put the breast, God put the womb, God put the female private part, God put her back, everything. Her hair, everything. Her leaves. Even Solomon saw the hip bone. I don't know how he saw it. Sex is designed to provide pleasure and satisfaction for both, not one-sided. For both the man and the woman, not one-sided. Can, can I see Songs of Solomon 4 verse 10? Men and women are both given the gift of being able to experience pleasure and delight with, within marriage. And it enriches and deepens the um, love relationship between the couple. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine? And the smell of thy ointment than all spices. I've never seen a toaster like Solomon. You don't know what to tell a woman. You don't know what to tell your wife. Because you're angry. You're angry. All the time you're frowning. You want to be the lion of the tribe of your own kingdom. You want to roar all the time for nothing. Women are very soft human beings. Men are very kind people, very nice. When your car spoils on the road right now, watch to see how many women that will come to tell you, uh, to help you. But in few seconds, men will gather. They don't need to know you. Men are kind. Men are nice. Somebody said there's a beast in every man. I believe. But the beast is to ward off enemies and not to slap your wife. The beast is not to be experienced within the home, but is to be mounted in front of your gate. And nobody, not sister, not brother, not enemy, dares to come in because the man is around. So sex is God's ordained. And before sex is the play. If what we do in the bedroom is fellowship, then we have to take the order of fellowship in the church. So we come with praise and worship. We are trying to wet the atmosphere so that the Holy Spirit can easily penetrate. We're talking in such a way that when the man of God gets up, we will hear the word of God powerfully delivered. But it takes a process. So we start with opening prayer. And the opening prayer is the words that we say to each other. Don't tell me you love me only by the bedside. You're a liar. Tell me in the morning. Tell me in the afternoon. Tell me when the soup is salty. Say, baby, I know that uh, maybe something happened. That's why it's uh, Maybe if we add a little water on it, it will be okay. Why are you always frowning? Why are you angry? The food is salty. Must you shout? Don't you make mistakes? When you make mistakes, do you blame yourself the way you're blaming another? Something that you can just look away has become a major challenge in your life. 
I know something will happen in our lives today. The Bible says they were both naked and they were not ashamed. How can you be sleeping with your dress on? Are you feeling cold? Are you hot? The weather is hot. Please, even if you cannot afford anything, afford a little AC in your bedroom. Give yourself comfort, Biko. Please, I beg you. Afford a little. Okay, AC is expensive. Put fan. Because body to body, so, you know, that physical body can ignite something. And so the way it is done is that once we get back home, we have our bath. Somebody should smell nice. You don't have perfume. Buy white powder that have a very good aroma. Put it on your armpit. Let the smell be inviting. Stop waiting for the man to make the first move. Love making can begin in the bathroom. Have you made love under the shower before? Answer me, you. Don't do like you. You no, You don't understand what I'm saying. Have you? Beautiful. No, the born again. It can begin. In, what about the kitchen? Why you're cooking? Why are you dressed all the way up in the kitchen? Miracle. What, what are you doing very close to the gas? So any part of your house is a good place to enjoy each other. Whether the bathroom or the parlor or the kitchen or the bedroom. Anywhere. They were both naked. This is just physical nakedness and spiritual nakedness and financial nakedness, psychological and emotional nakedness. Naked all round. And they were not ashamed. They were both naked. Let me tell you something, sir. Any woman who keeps arguing with you let me read it to you the way I wrote it here. Any woman that keeps arguing with you is hot and really cares about you. All she's trying to do is to tell you that you're hurting her and she wants you to fix it. Please listen. And if she's still bringing up old things, Maybe it's time to sit down and talk about it. It may be annoying to you. You may not like it. You call it nagging. Why is she always nagging? But that really means that the thing is stuck in her head and she wants it to be cleared. That's why she's reacting. When women want to take decision and they've made up their mind, they will not tell you. But you see that one she's doing constantly and making you to know that she's hot. She wants you to talk about it. That's love talking. Because women can be deadly if they make up their minds. A woman, when she plans a coup, it will not leak. Just as bad as you don't want her to talk about it, is as bad as she wants to talk about it. So that that thing will get off from her head. Love making is a fellowship. And in a fellowship, there's an opening prayer. Where we begin to talk to each other. I love you. I want to ask you a question. Is quarreling romantic why are you bringing up issue at the verge of love making why somebody is set somebody is ready to make love why are you asking her what was that thing that you told pious in the church the man of god is ready right now why are you raising dust? Why are you raising dust? Shut up, make sure you know somebody wants to do something. Is gossip romantic? 
at the verge of love making you begin to tell did you hear what pastor preached did you that's not what the time is it's a kairos time now we need to grab it why are you raising dust why are you bringing up issue at the verge of love making instead of you to enjoy sex lavishly you are raising problem you will not let me sleep every day i am praying god grant the fruit of the womb i want them to become pregnant and the more i'm praying the more you're spoiling it in the bedroom and before you know it tomorrow now you will say he's a zero minute man tomorrow you will say she is not wet but at the verge of love making, you are raising dust. Why? And after, after love making, sleep. He won't have sleep. Sleep, that is a sleeping medication. Sleep. Snow. You're too awake for God's liking. How you know that a man enjoys love making is a deep slumber after love making. Before you could say, Jack, he's snoring. And the reason why he's snoring is because you gave him styles. Leave every, one major style. Leave it, leave it alone. Every time you're facing heaven, I'm going to get more heaven. If he, has to, if he doesn't be like this, you will not make love. Because he's a saint. What do you mean? Marriage is honorable in all a lot of men love it from the back exercise you will not do your knee is paining you you don't need to register in a, a gym walk to the parlor back to the kitchen from the kitchen walk to the bedroom exercise little by little you will begin to achieve your desires why are you adding weight anyhow If you do not know what love making in marriage is, before you get in there, go for tutelage. At the age of love making, you remember pastors preaching, and before you know it, you now begin to talk about service. And the man of God that has already gone up trying to get deliver the message will begin to go down. Why are you raising dust at the wrong time? At that time, leave it. Enjoy sex. Uh, we are getting old. We don't retire. You see that your husband, you think he's getting old. He's not old outside though. When he sees somebody who he will give him peace, you will see that every part of his body can get up. You're the one causing the problem. The women, most of the times. And Oga, you don't have to make love only when you are in the mood. If I am not in the mood, help me to be in the mood. So love making is not what you just start. You begin the caressing, opening prayer, opening charge. As you're talking it, somebody can even begin to echo what you're saying. And then, I always advise couples, Please have a bag envelope by the side of your bed. If love making is a fellowship, we give all friend in fellowships. And that offering is called love money. Once in a month, once in a month, take your wife out. Sit down. I took my cameraman one day and I went to one eating house. I saw two people facing each other. Did you enjoy the food? Do you like it? I looked at their fingers. No wedding ring on it. Then I saw people sitting side by side. I looked at their fingers and I saw wedding rings. So I went to them. Are you married? No. Well, I'm just trying to get her. What about you? We are married. So I sat far. The next thing I heard, oh, we reach a bit. Because so can share Bible. Do you not see some? Can't you see people are like, that's the married one? But those who are not married, do you like the food? Are you enjoying it? Are you okay? Those who are stealing sex know it. But those who are legally married don't know. 
There are different styles. There is wheelbarrow style. Yes! There is pick pin style. The woman is the one picking pin. Or guy is the one at the back. There should be variety in your bedroom. Woo your spouse. Woo your wife. Woo your husband. You see men? Men. Men love variety. You. <laughs> be there and be deceiving yourself. And be saying both of you are clapping hands. And then you go back to the house. You don't do things to entice the man. You see here, the breast exercise it. Okay? You do your muscle like this. And then you do it. You do like this. You exercise. Firm it up. Because you have had 10 children does not mean it should be flat. What is wrong with you? You're carrying two people's food. The man's food and the baby's food. What is that? Oh, you have had children, so you can dress anyhow. It's a lie, you. No matter, my father at 80 years wanted to marry another wife. To make it the eighth wife. I'm telling you. And he called me one day and said, they don't want me to marry. I said, no, I will support you. You want to marry the eighth wife? Your highness? He said, yes. I said, I will support you. Leave them. Anybody who does not want to, you to marry another wife wants to kill you. But you know the truth, your highness. Let your eyes be good. Let it be restored. We are dealing with restoring your sight because you have eye problem. We were busy restoring the sight until he died. But I needed to calm his spirit. I needed to get him. I needed him to be at the level where I was. Why would I just say no to him so we we'll lose him? No, I didn't want to lose him. I told him, it's okay, we'll get it done. We'll get you somebody that will always be touching your body and all of that. He said, yes, I say, we are, we are, you have me, we are good. But can we tell your eyes first? Let's deal with your eyes. I will fly you abroad. You will go there and do checkup. So by the time you come back, your eyes is good. So that that lady, when he's coming, ah, he smiled. 80-year-old man. Love making is sweet, true of us. Very true. That's why he's eating. In a fellowship, there's an opening prayer. After opening prayer, praise and worship. Somebody can echo it. What are you trying to do to get the man of God ready for to deliver the word? No. He has his own life differently. He has his agenda differently. He is a man of his own. Even when you don't want him to rise, he can begin to rise. He, is in control. he has his own brain. He thinks his own way. He's a different man altogether. And so, at, after then, you begin to get ready. Praise and worship. You sing worship to God. You know worship goes slowly. Worship is intense. Everywhere is quiet. It is like a solemn um, um, praise to God. And then the man of God emerges. After the message, sir, please, before you get up, make sure that I took notes. So, sir, stay there until I'm also okay. If you reach orgasm and she doesn't reach orgasm and you got up and went on your way. So how can you get up and go out after making love? You didn't sleep. You did not enjoy it. Because at least 20 minutes sleep will descend on you. All those women who keep telling them, baby, honey, Hada, do it that way. Let them turn it around. And you go and try to do that kind of exercise and see whether it's easy. That's why you should be careful when your husband is talking. Because it takes a lot of energy to make love. That's why you should make him happy. That's why you should give him good food. Both of you are not the same mates. Even if you're older, it doesn't matter. In this home... The man is the head of the home. And give honor to whom honor is due. And after lovemaking, Sabiko, drop offering. 
the, the offering will let us know how good your love making is. So if you make love three times a week, you're in love. You make three times a week, powerful. You make love once a week. It's okay. You make love once in two weeks. You're busy. You're working. You make love once in three weeks. You're separated. You make love once in a month. Officially divorced. Sexually divorced. Because if you love me and I entice you, you will want to be with me all the time. You will want to touch me all the time. Can a woman initiate sex? Yes. We don't do it with sign. We say it. Why are you giving him sign? I've just been giving him sign. You will use your leg and cross on his leg. The earlier you talk, the better. Initiate it. When he's having his bath, one woman told me one day, Pastor Chom, I practice what you told me. I said, what did I tell you? She said, I was about making love with my husband. <laughs> the man of God fell. He said, message is not going to come today. I grabbed it. I was speaking in tongues. Pastor Chom, that's how I became pregnant for this girl. I've told you, there's no love making in heaven. Is only here. What is the weak point? Where is that place that when Oga touches you, you go to the moon and come back? Please tell him. He might not know. Tell him. It's my breast. It's my private part. Let me beg you. Before love making, wash your hands. Use, use soap, wash your fingernails. Because some dead, not tomorrow now, you're accusing somebody of infection and you don't know where he got it from. Wash your hands because your hands are relevant in love making. It goes different places. Sometimes it can enter Jerusalem. Sometimes it can come out in Zion. So make sure you wash your hands very well. Use soap, running water. Use running water. So I don't like when I'm talking, you remove me. Why are you always removing me? I want them to see me. Are you, who is that one who is doing that thing? If I catch you, cameraman. Wash your hands very well. Wash it. Keep it on running water. Remove the rings and wash with soap. Wash it well. Because these hands is going to go on a journey. Any part of the woman's body that you love so much, let the hand go there. And madam, do not get angry. There are men that once they want to make love, they pounce on you. They are rapists. It's an abomination. You are not a child of Abraham. Because the Bible told us that Abraham romanced his wife. So you begin with your hands. After you must have washed it. Somebody said, so I should be washing it all day. Don't you wash when you want to eat. Are you not about to eat a, an, an amazing delicacy? Prepared by God himself. Your hands must be clean. You wash it. And then use it. Anyhow. Do not stop using the hands until you see that rain has fallen and the land is wet. Don't stop. If not, you'll be hurting somebody. If not, it's gonna, you'll be wounding somebody. Keep doing it until it starts raining. Shebi has been hot all these days and we've been praying for rain to come. So everybody is enduring, fanning. So whatever you can do for rain to fall, do it. Once the rain has fallen, the land is green. You can plant. Plant cocoyam, it will germinate. Plant yam, it will germinate. Put corn, it will germinate. Whatever you want to plant, but let the land be wet. 
And then when a guy is planting, madam, you know how to talk all this why. Now you are dumb. You're not talking. That's the time to call those names. That's the nice. I do understand this. If you like, frown your face. Remove your face. You are too born again more than me. No problem. When I'm done, God will use me to do miracle. Then you will know that that anointing is still speaking hundred times. Because why love making is going on? Oh, sweetheart, my darling. I do, do you talk when you're making love? You don't talk. You talk, right? Good, 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 good. Talk! As you're talking, the man of God. That's why you're saying, right on, pastor. I can hear you, pastor. The message is penetrating. You fire the pastor, the more. That's what happens. That's what happens. But when you just keep quiet, when he finishes, you should go. I just allowed him, let him come and have his way and go. You're killing yourself. God gave you love making to enjoy. See how the devil has taken you over. You can imagine when somebody's coming. I'm, I was born in a royal family. So I know how my father feels. When it, me, the way I greet my father is Ezudo, Ezudo, Ezudo. Three times you must greet him that way. And then you find him. He will use his scepter, his rod, staff of office, and then he will be tapping you at the back. That's what happens when the pastor is preaching and somebody, the message is, you know, entering into you. You're getting it and you're saying, Amen. God bless you right down. That's what you do. Somebody said, Mommy, when I slept with my husband the first time, I was speaking in tongues. That is powerful. So if you don't know what to say, because speak in tongues, if in case you don't know. But if you know what to say, then call him those names. I love you, baby. You are this, you are that. Be kokwa, no, I beg you. Leave analog alone and come up tita so that we can see God. God made it for us to be enjoyed. One day, a man of God wanted to sleep with his wife. The wife says, hey, Deku, ah, it's so painful. He said, come, Mage de Libro Zikata. I lay hands on you. Receive instant health in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, shake yourself. Is it still there? She said, no. The man said, what must be done? Must be done. I just prayed for you so that you'll be okay. Have your bath morning and night. Brush your teeth morning and night. Because we are about to put your head on somebody's shoulder. So that you will not be perceiving asthmatic attack. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Be clean. If I have my bath three times, I'm changing underpants three times. I, of course, my body is going to react to each me if I have my bath. Even if I wear it by two, uh, one o'clock in the morning and for some reason I sweated and I need to have my bath by three, I can't wear it again. My body will revolt. It will eat me. I will change another one. And after three months, go to where you pack them. Begin to bring out all those brands. When you put it in water, you see that its color black has so beclouded you that you don't know how dirty it is. Brass should be washed at least once a week. Some people wash two times a week. And then take care of your private parts well. It doesn't need soap. My darling, shave. How can somebody buy a plot of land? You're going to plant, you're spreading a bush and taking this one to the right, to the left. By the time the person is done separating the, the, uh, uh, your, your village farm on the left and your village farm on the right, the, the man of God say, I'm tired. Shave off. Please remove it. You cannot plant on a land that has bush on it. Can you? It will not work. So you clear the bush, set it apart, burn it. Let the place be so that there is going to be easy access. 
Because sometimes it is even the jams that is on your hair that is getting into your own body. And all the time you're fighting infection and infection. Praise the Lord. God made us to enjoy sex. And if you love kissing, brush your teeth. You ate beans. You didn't brush. And you want somebody to kiss you. So the mouth will be busy. The hands will be busy. Both the two hands. It's not only the man's hands. His hands and your own hand at the same time. Enjoy it now. It's not in heaven. So that you don't remember all these years. I've not actually enjoyed sex. Nobody made you not to enjoy. If a guy is watching NTA news in the parlor and you need sex, you want to make love. I don't like the word sex. I prefer love making. And the children are in the parlor running up and down. That's why you need to buy television for them. Tinere her father, Abraham, has many sons. Tell them, lock them inside. Tell them, don't open that door. Except there's an emergency. And if there's an emergency, call me from within. Who get outside? If I see you, I'll lock the door. So that you can go get your... You will not because you have children, you will die. He gave it to you for you to enjoy it. I want you to write your questions. Please, wherever you are, write it and signal her and give it to her. So that I don't want you to be asking. And when you're writing, oh God, don't look at what she's writing. You don't look at what he's writing. Except you want to ask with your mouth, then we're going to give you the microphone. Praise the Lord. Your mother came. And the only place your mother wants to sleep is in your bedroom. And you don't think it's wrong. You're telling your wife, it's okay, no problem. Mama is just here for two days or two weeks. She will go. We will continue sleeping the way we used to sleep. Sir, you're not a man. Love making lowers blood pressure. It brings down BP. It joke apart. That's not, there's no joke here. It lowers blood pressure. It gives you better immune system. When you see a woman that is always enjoying lovemaking and a man, they are always happy. Anytime a woman kills cockroach in the house and all the intestines come out to follow that woman home, she's deprived of lovemaking. So she gives her anger to mosquito. She gives her anger to cockroach. She gives her anger to plates. She gives her anger to everybody. She doesn't know who to give it to. But when she's happy and she eats well, even the mosquito we know that madam does not want to kill me. <laughs> she, she doesn't want to touch me. That's why she's killing me like this. Better heart health, possibly including lower risk of heart disease. Because the heart needs to pump. Both of you, that time you're going to cloud nine, the heart is beating. It's healthy for the heart. That reaction you think is chemistry is actually healthy to your system. It gives you, it improves your self-esteem. When you see a woman walking majestically, she eats well in the bedroom. You see a man walking and bouncing, always happy. <laughs> a guy is not deprived in the bedroom. But you see him, good morning. Hey, good morning, sir. Oh, when he ain't away, he away. Trace it to the home. Lack of lovemaking. It decreases anxiety and depression. Love making. And it increases libido. A man said, one woman said, my husband loves making love twice a, a day. I said, now your husband is a nice man. Who, he will live long. <laughs> Madam, catch up with him. That's a blessing. Is it food? Yes. Men need sex. Women don't actually need it for a man is a need. For a woman is a want. So, love making and sex is part of the function of the man. That's why when you deprive him, you see him getting angry because he needs it. He gives you immediate natural relief from headache. 
Most of the times you can't sleep. If you can't sleep, please go to Oga. If he's snoring, wake him up. Hold him. Start touching him. Touch the nipple. Touch the body. Touch everywhere. What you need is just a love making a way and you sleep. And then it gives you better sleep. That's what it does. I need it, but I, I'm waiting for him to come. Now you go suffer because you're the one who needs it right now. He might not be in the mood. And please, whenever you want love making, please, hmm? begin in the morning. Don't condemn my food. How can I cook food and it's salty? You're eating it and you're complaining. Meanwhile, you're waiting for love making at night. You've already polluted somebody's mind. God is the one. The Bible says an Elkanah, new Hannah, is a knowledge. I love the word new. That means oh God knows the part of the body he's going to touch. He so studied me that he knows my sensitive point. And that once he goes there, he will get... There are women that once you touch their nipple, even if they don't want, they want. There are, but any woman you touch her nipple, touch her body, she doesn't shake. shake. Nothing happens to her. She needs a doctor. Gio. Something is wrong with her. Or her mind is not there. Or oh, she's concluded. It's not just to have children. What do you need again? She be. We have gotten all our children. No, you don't make love for children. It's a need for a man. And make sure that you eat well in your bedroom. If you eat well in your bedroom, you will not be hungry. Okay. Now that the society is harsh, everywhere is harsh. You can imagine if we buy melogan in the market, a lot of us will not be able to buy it. You can imagine you need to buy the female organ in the market, male organ in the market, before you make love. Can't you see that so many people are not going to buy it? So society is harsh, economy is harsh, but there is something that will make you happy, that God deposited in your body. You don't need to buy it. Use it! Use it well. Wake up in the morning, do exercise, run, jump, shake your legs. Do like this, do like this. Even if you can do it, skip for 30 minutes and be healthy. You know how to squat. You know how to bend. You know how to, you, you know the wheelbarrow, the way you, that's wheelbarrow style. Learn different styles. All the time you lie like this. Have your way, I'm ready anywhere, anytime. When you're done, you just get up and go. He will not enjoy sex. And because it's a need for them, you might be endangering your home. Hallelujah. I am born again. No. I'm a pastor. I speak in tongues. God uses me in diverse ways. But I'm telling you the truth. Love making is not sweet in the home. So brothers are falling apart. Women are looking for other men elsewhere. Men are looking for younger girls elsewhere. That will give it to them and satisfy them. But that's not going to be your portion. In the name of Jesus. So, Ogapiko, brush your teeth because every night something can happen. Madam, shave off. Shave. Pastor Chum, I don't have money for shaving stick. You use razor blade. If you hurt yourself, that's your business. If you razor blade, I don't have. Break a bottle, use it. By all means, shave. By all means, shave. And be neat. And then you don't use soap on your body, women. Your private part doesn't need soap, just fresh water. Only water. It doesn't need any other thing. Put your hand inside. That's somebody's food. That's somebody's place of abode. Wash it well. Clean it well. Use panty liner. So that all of those droppings that doesn't look nice, they'll be dropping on the panty liner. It, will, it has some antibiotics on it and it will protect you from germs and infection. And for the man, once you go back and come back and you're ready to sleep, wash your hands on running water in case of in case it. In case something has to be done. Is it possible to be living analog life? No care, no giving, etc. And expect digital sex life. The man is not even godly and not born again. 
You don't give me. Don't you know that love is give and take? But madam, do not allow what is doing to affect you. But it can actually hurt and it's not good. Any man, no matter how much your wife makes, you are the giver. You give health. You give life. You give sex. You give provision. You give shelter. And the woman is there. If you bring one million, she'll bring 700. If you bring 1,000, she'll bring 800. She's there to support you. But you as a man, you're so stingy. You cannot give. And then tomorrow in the night, you want love making. You're about to rape somebody. You're not love making love. You're a rapist. A woman came to me and told me, Mommy, my husband gets erection on his own. He doesn't need anything to just, once he gets up, he will come to me and he will pounce on me. He has wounded me all around. I am tired. I said, that's a wicked man. Funny enough, he's a pastor. I'm telling you, sir. Funny enough, he's a pastor. You romance your wife. You bring me to that cloud where you are. I've told you that until the land is wet, you don't plant. How can you dig? Digging is going to be tough. It's hard. It will be harsh. And you plant, it will not survive. You get erection on your own. You go and get some things and there are some certain food that we eat and it makes um, erection good. You know that? Yam is one of them. It helps erection. What is that name of that um, seed? Not ginger. Turmeric is one of them. Garlic is one of them. You don't have to chew it. You can cut it small, 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 and then put it in gary and swallow so that you don't perceive that thing. Garlic gives erection. Good mind, peace of mind. That's why the woman should always make sure that her husband is happy. And the man, let me tell you, if I'm your wife, you don't buy earring for me. You don't buy underwear. You don't buy pants. You don't buy anything. You don't even give me money. How, how do we make the love? This is love making and it takes two. How do we do it? Make your wife happy. Every little thing you get a man. And women, if you don't respect that man, you will not get the best of him. So, Oga, if you're in analog, expect analog, analog love making. It, 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 it practically means you don't love her. You only come on when you want to enjoy yourself. And what kind of enjoyment is that that you're doing and somebody is crying? That's not love anymore. Please, I want you to open up and ask your questions. Your questions will bring up every other thing that we need to know about lovemaking. Please, if you want the microphone, they will give it to you. you want, you've written it, please pass it across to me. Praise the Lord. Don't keep quiet too. Okay. Yeah, say it from there. Or you want to come? Before you get married, you've already made up your mind on the number of children that you're going to have. And I always like it, except there are challenges that will stop children from coming. But if there are no challenges, I always like it to have your children at a go. Have them at the same time if you want to have two or you, have to have, you want to have three. Now, when you give birth and your period doesn't come, and our guy is coming closer, I tell you the truth, there's actually nothing wrong in that. Um, um, in sleeping with your husband. Absolutely nothing. If the period is coming, Oga will wait now until the period is over. If that's what you asked. Is it what you asked? I 
to pay my period. You used to do what? After three, three months. Okay. And you know that when you period, in that time, when your husband come to you, have another pregnancy, then that situation, what are you going to do? Nothing is wrong in... Um, yeah, yeah. I have a, a member now who went to the U.S. to have another baby. She had one and came back when the baby was four months. Oga has missed her so much. They slept together. Nothing a four months old baby pregnancy occurred. I am actually happy. And I told her, how many children do you want to have? She said three. I said, this is going to be the second one. So if I were you, I'll have all of them at the same time. And then don't leave off. So if the case is that you want to space, there are people that God himself will space for them. But if you're on, you're not sure. Please, Oga, buy condom and use for the meantime until somebody is ready to have another one. Or you meet when somebody is safe. But because we are children of God, we don't know when we are safe. We don't know every time the land is green. So you can actually have a contraceptive on. There is one on the, on the hand, right? There's one they put on the hand. There's one, I think that is like the safest. You have it on until when you're ready to have another one. You take it off so that that way nobody has any issue of not sleeping together and sleeping together. So that's the only option. But nothing should make you because when you deny your husband, except for medical reasons, because I know there are people that the man might be struggling with erection, and so he's so frustrated when a man wants to make love to his wife, the, the erection is not strong, and along the way it collapses. And hey, it's a medical challenge, so we can actually go to the hospital and see what we can do to get health, uh, to get it restored, and we pray. But if everything is okay and everything is good, and you easily conceive, have a contraceptive on, nurse your baby, when you're ready to have another one, take it off and conceive again. Any other question? Okay. And there's somebody at the back. So. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have always desired to have, I think, I have had, end of God, God give. Then they talk about this, uh, they say, take care of your wife because your wife's that your wife give you uh, give you sex. And so the point like, the question they put is I want to ask in love making, any party that enjoys more. And why this word give as if it is somebody's at the receiving side. So I want to know why the word is it a woman that gives a man sex? But my own understanding for the way they put it is that you know the one enjoys more. No, no, you know sometimes we teach out of context. Love making should be enjoyed by both and it should be equal. So that's why when the man reaches orgasm first and the lady hasn't reached, the man stays there. Because staying there, the woman feeling that the male organ is still in her body is a way to also make her to reach orgasm. We enjoy it both. If one person enjoys more than the other, it's not love making anymore. Both of us should. And then why you hear um, the man gives is because the man is, what the man gives is not sex, it's seed. The man carries the sperm. Every unborn child is in the loins of the man. And when a man sleeps with his wife, he releases seed into her. So that's why he's the one who gives the seed. For, and then the woman has a, a natural habitat for the seed to be incubated and it grows. But lovemaking should be done in such a way that the man enjoys 100%, I enjoy 100%. Any time the man enjoys sex more than the woman, one person raped the other. Ma, what will you do when your wife is not reciprocating after you after you do what after you try your best to make her happy but she will not see eh, um when a woman does not talk and does not reciprocate love there is an underlying factor there is an emotional trauma there is something she's hiding away from you because naturally, 
we easily express. I told us on the very first day that men are logical thinkers and women are emotional feelers. We are too full of emotions and that's what makes us talk too much. So when a woman is not talking, there is a problem somewhere. There are a lot of women that are naturally and emotionally heartbroken by the same man they are living with. They won't talk, they won't express, they don't know how to say it. So when a woman is not reciprocating, so please take her out. Maybe not the home, maybe somewhere else. That's why I believe that poverty is a cause. You see that thing we did in the morning, calling on people to come and give. I don't know whether you were in church and you did not give. It's not good. And today, before you go, you will give. Always give whenever the things of God is being mentioned. Because if you don't know how to give, it will also affect you in the home. When a man does not treat a woman well, that woman, and once she begins to suck and soak, she, the, the marriage is going to be in trouble because she's gone out of her habitat. She's gone out of who she is. She's not talking anymore. So if I were you, I would take her out to a hotel, sit her down, and it might be from childhood. I know of ladies that their father raped. They, they raped them and they are not able to talk to anybody. You will only hear she's not always happy. I met my PA, a depressed widow. My PA was widowed very early and I didn't know but I went for a speaking engagement and God said, take her. And then I told her, she started running away. But anytime she closes work, instead of mentioning the name of her street, she will mention my street. And they, they will bring her straight to my street. She will realize herself and then she will do a U-turn. She kept doing it until she couldn't do it anymore. Today, you will not believe that that was a depressed widow. That her husband was poisoned and left to die well. He died well. They didn't even look for him. For almost three days, he decayed. They didn't let her see the corpse of the man because the man was rotten. So you can imagine that trauma. But by association, she will tell you she never knew. But this is who, that's why when people follow me out, they want to follow again and again because you keep hearing intermittently. I am not a pastor. I'm not a counselor because I'm a pastor. I have a PhD in guidance and counseling. I have a second master's in peace resolution and conflict management. I'm not just doing it because I'm a pastor. He's a calling. And my first master's was on pastoral counseling. So all around, I know what I'm doing. When you see a woman not talking, Biko, don't get angry at the same time. Men do it. Why are you angry? Why are you frowning? And they get angry at the same time. So you're not a man. Because maturity, the one that is mature is the one that says sorry. The one that is mature is the one that wants to find out what the problem is. The one that is mature is the one that easily forgives. Please bring her. It might be a bottled up issue that she hasn't ever spoken to anybody. Before you condemn her, hear her out. And don't be the man that easily uses what your wife tells you to speak against her. You tell your sibling. You tell your elder sister. You tell your younger sister and they make caricature of her. That way she's not going to talk to you. So you need time out to find out what is eating her up. And the earlier you do that, the better. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Hello. This the question is this, ma'am. Whereby you're in marriage, you're trying to do everything to make your husband to feel comfortable and it's always harsh on you. In that position, what are you going to do on it? What do you mean by being comfortable? Like now, maybe they send it to an errand for you to go to do something for him. And you're trying your best to make sure that you're doing that thing to be okay. But to him, he says that whatever you're doing does not mean anything to him. A lot of men, let me tell you something, eh? Um, whenever you want to get married, the same thing that happens when you want to buy a plot of land is what you do when you want to get married. Do a survey. Clear the bush. Fi do a search. Find out about the land. Is it encumbered? Has somebody come in there? So many men grew up not knowing what love is. 
So many men grew up not hearing like my son or my daughter will always say, I love you, mommy, and all of that. They are growing up with it. I didn't grow up that way. So I wasn't telling my mother, I love you, mommy, and all of that. So many children are going up today. They want to hug you before they go to school. They want to, mm, before they go to school. But a lot of us didn't grow up that way. So one thing you do during courtship is to talk. We use the time for courtship to talk rubbish, irrelevant things. How are you? Did you miss me? Did you sleep yesterday night? We keep asking that question until one year is over. And you're getting married to somebody you practically do not know. But when we begin to talk a young man said my growing up my father was wicked my mother and i realized that life is not fair it's not good to be nice my mother was nice my father maltreated her so he made up his mind he's not going to be nice he was the wife who came to report to me i said tell me about your husband's growing up and she said well the father died when they were small so a widow raised that man and you know the life of a widow always complaining god why did i do to you that you left me alone training these children that boy will grow up not knowing love so when you don't ask questions you will not know how to handle him because in his growing up except there is a relearning and unlearning he's gonna be like that and so the wife will begin to get angry because she doesn't understand who she married but talking to each other tell me about your growing up what happened did your parents live together were they close in such comments let me share this with you there was a lady who wanted to get married and they went to tell that lady you see this doctor that is coming for your hand in marriage the mother is a witch that's why since he came back from germany he's not been able to marry the mother is a witch don't ever go boy she loved this young man so one day she went to the house of the man the woman saw her coming and went by the corner only the face of the woman alone will prove to you that what she heard was true. She walked up to the woman and said, Mama, I brought you gifts. So many people said bad things about you. One of the things they said is that you're a witch. Ma, don't worry. I am a witch too. So let's do it together. I'm, I'm not telling you what I read on a book. The woman was shocked and was looking at her. And then the woman called her to come. I'm not a witch. I had three boys. Women killed my first son. A woman killed my second son. This is the only one remaining. I don't like women. Because each time I see them, my heart will skip. And I will think they will want to kill my son. The way they, you see? So when you begin to judge people, what you don't know, you haven't investigated. So most of these men grew up not knowing love. They grew up in a place where, was it not me who took a decision that I don't want to get married? I took that decision. Because where I'm coming from does not look like what I'm doing today. But this is who I am. So most of the times they never knew it. And for men, once they are 30, they are thinking marriage. You want to tell them I'm of age, I want to get married. They forget that it has nothing to do with physical age. Even though a boy shouldn't get married. But it has a lot to do with maturity age. So they are not mature. You, somebody came to me and said I'm a priest. They want to give me a, 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 a parish. Pray for me, I want to get married. I said, sir, I'm not going to pray for you. You don't get married because you, they are giving you a parish. You get married because you're ready for marriage. You're not marrying a parishioner. You're marrying a wife. So go back home. When you're ready for a wife, come. I will pray for you. But if it is because they want to give you a parish, attention will be given to the parish more than this lady. And she's going to suffer. Even though you're a man of God. So we don't do it that way. He might be growing up. But moreover, you cannot do anything to make anybody comfortable. Though. You can't make anybody comfortable. The Holy Ghost does that work. So do your own thing and use your knees. And let God do the rest. There are things you can do. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, Ma, is it possible for a man not to meet the wife sexually for months? And claim to be self-controlled. Okay, is he a married man? A married man. Which kind of self-control is this one? No, some, he's meeting somebody else. 
is either he's meeting somebody else or he's not well. If he's a married man. Those are the two things. He's lost love or you don't satisfy him sexually and he doesn't know how to tell you. Women, go and do exercise and that you have flesh and fat does not mean you cannot be sexually active. Learn different styles. Learn back, learn front, left side. There is variety in the bedroom. It's not a sin. You're not sinning. So that you tell, you disabuse that from your mind. So you see that she's not satisfied sexually. He's not satisfied sexually and he doesn't know how to say it or he has somebody else outside or he's not well. This one is not self-control, it's satanic. Is there any bad effect of a woman who had circumcision on love making? If so, what does the man do and how does the woman help? Okay. You know, they normally say that when a woman is circumcised, it reduces her libido, right? But one thing that the Holy Ghost does is that all things will become new. Love making is an act of God. God made it. It was lack of knowledge that made them do what they were doing. So for you now, most of the times, I said it the other day that the mind is the greatest machine in the body of anybody. It's in the mind. It's in the mind. I tell you the truth that when I was getting married, you know my husband came and told me that doctor said he has low sperm count. And it's so low that he can't father a child. So by the time we got married, the brain told the male organ, what are you working for? There is no sperm. The one that is alive is 5%. So it's not going to work. So we started facing that challenge. The mind. The mind is powerful. Until we started winning. Until we started disabusing the mind from it. Your mind is going to tell you, because of this, this will not work. And if you believe it, it will not work. So I tell you the truth that you're a child of God. You're a child redeemed by the blood. Circumcision or no circumcision, let the man help you to always put you in the mood. Any part of your body that is so sensitive, please share. I know of a woman of God that whenever she makes love with her husband, especially when the man is traveling, on the way traveling, they use phone and they begin to talk about the love making on the phone. I love the way you sucked my breast. I love the way they are not sinning. No, this one you're seeing. Hmm. They are not sinning. It's been they are almost 60 years. Yet yeah, those who are much younger are not doing it. It's not a sin. What can a woman do when the husband says you talk too much during love making? Because you just said it's good to talk. The man is not digital. We pray that the Spirit of God will take him over. And from today, he will understand that when you say, Right on, pastor! He makes the pastor to preach more. Why does he want you to shut up? Well, if you keep him quiet, makes him enjoy the sex. And he doesn't make you enjoy the sex. A guy is not fair to you. He only wants to be satisfied and he doesn't consider you. So both of you come to a round table and tell him whenever I talk, he makes me excited. And please, sir, stop being harsh. Stop being harsh. This is your home. And when you don't do it here, you will not do it in heaven. No. That's the truth. I like going out, but my husband don't like taking me out. He will say I should stay at home. But he's not always at home. I just found out that he has an affair outside the home. Each time I ask him for sex, he always tells me that he's tired. He only has sex with me twice or once in a week. Eh? Who wrote this? Twice or once in a week and you're complaining. Let's concentrate the one he's doing outside and bring him home. Madam, do you want to have it seven times a day? A week? Or did you make a mistake? You wanted to write a month and you wrote a week. He always said that he's thinking a lot of things so he don't have time for sex. 
Please, ma, do a second write-up. Let me know whether you actually mean a week or a month. So this is suspended. I need a continuation. A situation where your wife does not appreciate you when you do something that needs to say thank you. When she makes mistakes, she does not say, I am sorry. What do I do? Your wife is not broken. She's not born again. She's born again technically. She's not born again for real. Because when you're broken, I'm sorry will be very easy for you to say. How can a woman find it difficult to say, I'm sorry? What you're begging that your husband should be saying is what you as a woman, you're struggling to do. Thank God you're not my father's wife. Therefore, find you one good. Honestly, you will come to say sorry with a goat. Then you will know. Please, teach her the word of God. Gather scriptures and pass across to her. She seems to be lacking it. She's proud and she has ego. And God does not love them. So it's not a good one. My, is it good for a man to have love in a night? For six times or more than, and also how many years somebody will be and stop making love. Let me answer the second one first. You will keep making love until you die in your old age. Number one, is it good for a man to make love six times in a night? Tell him to stop taking that Igbo he's taking. Just tell him to stop taking that drug he's taking. For his own life, please. For his kidney's sake. For his own life. Tell him to stop taking that mburu mini that he's taking. Whatever concussion he's taking, tell him to stop. So that he will be alive and not collapse on a woman one day. Shebi have answered you. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. I'll go straight. Go ahead. Talk about breast sucking. Yes. Our own is it for formality? The breast sucking is both. <laughs> okay, ma. Second question. Is okay, let me answer the first one. The breast sucking is both. Do you suck your husband's breast? Beautiful. It's both. What about you? Uh -huh. Let me go to those that have been married for years. Mommy, do you suck that? She was, she was trying to hide. Let me tell you, I used to have blocked nose. So, it gave me tough time. Because I used to be asthmatic. When my own was secondary asthmatic attack. And in 2004, God took it off. So, you, my nose is always blocked. So, when it comes to sucking the breast, I struggled with it. Because it will be choking me. Do you understand? The same way the breast is a soft spot for the woman, is the same way it is for the man. So, suck me, I suck you. Love making will be sweet. Eh? Eh, so it's the same. The same. Your own is not for fancy, sir. The Wait, second no. one. I have a pharmaceutical. You have? I have a pharmaceutical. So okay. And there are some relevant questions that I want to ask. Okay. And why I say this relevant is that, you see this pepper soup? Yes. There is an aroma of this pepper soup that whatever you perceive, you know that it's pepper soup. Yes. This too much of washing of yonder. Are we not washing away the natural endowment? No, only when you have your bath. You know, there are men that move. Somebody asked me that question. There are men that move by those smellings. But when you overwash it, it becomes, in fact, chaff. And in the area of shaving, there are some people, is it advisable to shave? Because there are people who don't like shaving. 
Let me balance it. Yeah. Let me balance it. Anytime you go to the bathroom to have your bath, it is necessary that you wash every part of your body. And the reason why you don't use soap to wash your private part is because of what he said. That's why soap does not go there. Water does not remove the smell of the vagina. It's still there. And that's what makes you female. That's what makes you you. Vagina has a smell of its own. And it is enticing for men. And so there is absolutely nothing. But you can't have your bath. If you, don't have, if you have your bath and you don't wash that place, you're, you're attracting infection. Then, the shaving part of it, the truth of the matter is that whether you shave or you don't shave, the man of God will find his way. But the truth is that most of the times, when you don't shave, um, grass A on the right can cross over to grass B, blocking the entrance. So most of the times, you might not want to, if you do what your husband likes, do what appeals to him, appeals to him. If he likes the hair, fool, leave him fool. Make sure you are clean. As long as he makes him happy and he makes him calm, then do it. Does that make, does it make sense? Did it make sense? Okay. Thank you for that question. Any other one? I'm shocked people are not asking too many questions. Eh? My husband sleeps with me. I don't get satisfied. You will not ask now. You're quiet. Um, we had uh, this family week several years back. So one woman asked a question. No, one man asked a question. And the wife was not around. The wife traveled. The man asked a question. But people called the woman. This one, your wife, husband, asked this kind of question in church to the hope all is well. So the woman now called the husband. And say, which question do you ask today in church? You want to expose yourself? You see, this is part of the reason why some of them are forming voluntary dumbness and voluntary deafness. And that is why we have given you the option of writing it. Write it. Nobody is going to ask you to. Of course, the other question the woman of God didn't understand she didn't insist that whoever wrote it should stand up. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. We can handle it later on. The one of uh, having sex twice a week. I said, give me a second. Uh -huh. there's, there's another dimension of the question where she alleges that she, she feels that the husband has um, another... another so that dimension we can come to it, but it's not now. So what I'm saying is that, please, we are here to solve problems. That's why this woman of God has taken the pains to come, so that we'll interact. Write out something. Let's read it together. We'll have a few more minutes to go, so that it will be fully beneficial to every one of us. We can have this program and conclude it, and you are still struggling with what you are struggling with. It will be a waste of resources, a waste of time. It will be useless. So please, whatever it is that is aching you, that you don't understand, that are causing sorts of troubles around you, put them down. Let's see how we can talk them out. Already, after Friday, some people have come to me to tell me there are changes. After Friday, some people have come to tell me, well, uh, in fact, we're having issues, but that Friday, some matters were sorted out. So please, that is why we are here. And God will bless you as you do the needful in Jesus' name. Please, I still need that person who asked that question to please, I want to answer it. That's why I kept it pending. I want to know whether it's a week that you sleep twice a week or in a month. 
he wants to ask, Daddy wants to ask, give him. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask if love making affects conception. If love making does it affect conception? No, no, no. Does it affect pregnancy? Conception has conceived. No way. It doesn't. Conception comes from love making. So when you make love and you're you're suspecting you're about to be conceived, the male organ does not even reach to the mouth of the womb, so it doesn't have anything to do with what is. No, 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 no. Whether you, because most of the times, why they encourage those who are looking for the fruit of the womb to do love making from the back is that it makes the male organ to go deeper. Still, it doesn't have anything to do. If the land is not wet, use mic. No, don't be done. Use, use it. Let me understand what you're saying. But did I answer you? I don't think so. So use it so that I can understand what you're saying. When somebody is pregnant, is it what you mean? Or when conception is about to take place? Um, when you say, you say, if the land is not watered, it cannot be productive. That's what I'm Okay, asking. no. If the land is not wet, if the, if the vagina is not wet, penetration will be painful. And it will be hard. So the man makes the woman to uh, be wet so that there will be easy penetration. That's what I mean. Huh? Use the mic now. Uh -huh. That's a medical person. The, it says when the, uh, um, um, the uh, private part is wet, it allows for easy movement of the sperm. So that's why romance is important. And that's why the woman needs to be wet. Is that? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, as before I read this one. Praise the Lord. Uh, I remember the woman of us said something. Please put the camera on the person. The one I'm answering, okay. Say that uh, peace is not absent of war. Yes. And that's the truth. Many marriages that, are, that you look from afar of and you admire it and you see it very sweet, you don't know what yeah. they are trying to manage from inside. A lot of sacrifice. So I have a friend that visited me and when he was talking about my husband, my husband, my husband, my former secretary. Like, so very well praising the husband. But at the point, that when this man first, he will carry the tradition and pray to the ground. Uh, that I now know. Ah, I now ask myself. So there is also a time of uh, five minutes madness everywhere. So going straight to my point now is that all our questions is not centering about sex or love making. But in a man's life, you find that like a year you have spent much. Pay school fees, take care of this, take care of that, get admission to your child, and at the end of the day, you are exhausted. And looking at, looking at your pulse, and December is around the corner, you tell your wife, please, look at how much you have spent to make sure that this is going in school. And this one is working, this one is working. And you are now talking about Christmas clothes. Let's see how. Keep that to understand it. The person will tell you that you cannot skip that one because everybody is doing it. You understand? That means you don't have go and find the money. Inside of you, you know that you needed to be pitied because you have spent so much for the year. And you, even as you are talking, you are not buoyant to carry on with that smart clothes. Situation like this. Begin to see yourself as if the woman is not understanding how you feel or what you are passing through. So, on that note, I would like you to balance it. Whether is it that that man is not born again, or 
or maybe the wife needed to have understanding or something like that. That's number one question. Okay. Number two, I have a second question. Okay. When you marry a wife, find out that this is what she likes and make her and equip her to be able to handle that aspect of her life. Maybe she's the one that likes fashion, like clothes. And you might not have that vision. Maybe you want to buy a block there, buy cement there, fix a house, do this one, do this one, buy land, you understand? But she is value, not valuing that one we are talking about. She wants to value fashion to look good. And you looked at all these things and say, okay, no problem. Let me empower you that you have a source to control money. With that money, don't even do much in the family, but handle that. Just a little, okay, handle pure water. Let there be water in the house. Let me just put it in. That is the official thing you have shared to her. And in that situation, it's now they complaining about clothes. You are not buying clothes. You are not doing this. I, this is the two points I want to make now that I want you to handle. First of all, a wise woman does not buy clothes during December. Let me say it again. A wise woman does not buy Christmas clothes in the month of December. I don't think I've ever bought clothes for my children in December. I buy, I buy things October. I buy it September. I buy it August. I am not in December period, give me money, because I've always known that that time is a rush time Everything gets expensive. I said a few days ago that I'm a long-time planner. I want to plan my things ahead of time. So one of those things that catches women, it doesn't catch me. So I go to a bar, or I go, or I order their clothes. Or when I travel during July or August abroad, I buy their things and I come back. And I neatly fold all that day. I know what they are going to wear Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year Day. If New Year is on Saturday, that means there is going to be service on Sunday. So I get all their four clothes together. And I fold them. I buy their shoes. I buy their clothes. I am that kind of person that when you see my children, you will want to have children. God blessed me and gave me beautiful, beautiful son. Not a handsome son. And a beautiful daughter. So, sir, every woman here, it is actually very wrong for you to be shopping for Christmas in the month of December. It doesn't show wisdom. You're spending that money three times. You're spending it two times. I buy my rice well ahead of time. So, by the time they are increasing it with 5,000, I'm not there. I buy whatever or I give the money and I say, don't bring it. I'll carry it when the time comes. That's how I do. So everybody must not, um, let me finish answering the question. Everybody must not um, um, wear Christmas clothes. I don't wear Christmas clothes. I have my clothes. I only buy for my kids. And then somebody might say, but when I ask him for the money that time, he will say he doesn't have it. There's something called she money. Use your money, buy it. That time, whatever he gives you, take it and make it up. Marriage is a role-less institution. Anybody can play any role. As long as God has endowed you with it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the man. I tell you the truth that every day of my husband's life, his thank you and gratitude to God is thank you for giving me such a woman. Because I've taken away a lot of stress from him. And I lie not. He watches whatever I say. And I have people who will tell you absolutely correct. If I have 10,000 naira or 50,000 naira in my hand, my PA, Uche, do we have rice? No, mommy. Okay, let's buy rice. Do we have bees? I don't know what it means to go to my husband and give me money for food. I don't know when last I did that. I, don't, I can't remember. I need money to cook soup. What is my role? What am I doing? Don't I get money? He's the man. He must do it. I, don't, I, don't, I think if God has endowed me and blessed me and I can do it, I'll get it done. After all, this is a man who married me, bought me the first car, the second car, the third car. Paid my school fees when I did postgraduate diploma in education. He mustn't necessarily be giving me one, one combo every day, every day, every day. So that I will feel he's the man. No way. 
I don't do it that way. You might be different, but I tell you, no man will joke with you. You need to see my husband handle microphone to introduce me when I want to speak. You'll be wowed. Number two, when the man gives me money for business and tells me to be providing pure water or sachet water or bottled water, and then there is something women do that is so bad. They see men as an ATM machine. I don't see men, men like that. They see men like that. He must give me money for this. He must give me money for this. I feel he's a, a, an unwise woman who does that. It's not my thing. If you give me money, I sort out things. My job is to make life easier for the man. Most times you do not know the relevance of this man until you look for them, you don't find them anymore. Because death can happen in the midst of whatever we're talking. Empowering yourself is also empowering your future and your children. So these things women do. In fact, one day I had to cry. I said, is it because I take care of everything? You don't now remember. To tell you what I do. When I have money, I sort out things. It's a home. It's one family. When I have money, I, do, I even do for him. When I go to buy stuff for my children, I see what my husband likes. I pick it and I'll give it to him. Honey, guess how much I bought this t-shirt? 45,000. He will scream. Really? I said, yes. I bought for my son as well. My son will not wear anything that is not designer. Never. I told him, I don't blame you. <laughs> You're blessed. He will not wear anything that he's 17. He's schooling abroad. Even before he traveled, he will not. He will tell me, mommy, buy this one. I, you were there when I was talking to my daughter. I saw her continuous assessment. I was impressed, 89. So I told her, somebody bought me the latest iPad recently from UK. And I have my own. And they are over a million. This one is close to a little less than tiny, two million. But the one I bought is 1.3. And I told my daughter, give me 100%. And I'm going to give you the iPad. He said, mommy, is a lie. Mommy, is a lie. I said, I'm telling you the truth. Once you give it to me, I, I told my son, give me Wayek, Neko, Cambridge, IELTS, and Jam. Pass all of them. I'll give you my Acura, and I'll give you my iPhone. This boy will start reading by 9 p.m. in the morning, and will not sleep till 7 a.m. Is he not schooling abroad? No, be me that drive my Acura. But I made sure I gave him the iPhone. I challenged them. I don't... I, I, if, if you don't have she money, and you must not be a squander maniac, you must not be that a man empowered you and gave you money, you should be returning turnover. My member told me two days ago that the little shop he started for his wife, she just bought a plot of land worth five million. I say empower her the more. They give you money, you use it carelessly. You complain, you give to your parents because in your own assessment, you marry to enrich your parents. You're wrong and you don't know what you're doing. Meanwhile, that marriage is a seed. If you don't water it, if you don't groom it, if you don't tame it, if you don't let it grow, it will not continually be there. And when it is cut off, your mother will lack and she will look for another way to survive. So when you start a business for me, what I owe you is every month I'll give you an account. I said, I started it with 5,000. I made 6,700. You know, I don't drink mineral. I don't drink malt. The only thing I drink, and every day I say, God, I give you thanks, is water. And then my PA will do me fresh juice, and I take. I don't know how to take bones, egg, biscuit, all of those things. They are not my thing. I told her I'm not a tea person. You can leave tea things in the house. I'm not going to touch it. I really don't like milk. If I take it, I take it once in a while. So what do I eat? I'm not a breakfast person. So I practically don't eat in the morning. Hotel breakfast, um, um, you know, complimentary breakfast. I don't know what it is because I sleep late and I wake late. So I don't go for it. There are times that you retrain yourself from wherever you're coming from. You give me money, I will give you a thorough account. Be rest assured that if you give me 1,000 naira to spend, I will give you an account of 1,500 naira. I run the ministry's account. You know why I run it? I'm a better accountant. Because if I leave it for my people, 
in that money they will want to give me an honorarium each time we are doing a program they will say we know what people give you when you go out and i will see money so many zeros i say for who they say me i say no way you can't give me money from my own thing so is that what you would have done if you're the one running the account no you cannot they say boy you deserve it i say i don't deserve it this is my own you will bear me witness that's why i don't let them run the account you want to judge what happens outside and the money i raise for a conference you have brought out this bulk money to give to me any day you want to bless me raise the money yourself and not the one i raise for god's work i don't touch it after all i sponsor it so i don't need it and at the end of the day i will sit down and i will say january i did this did 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 did, did. income this expenditure this balance you're asking me balance should be one thousand why am i saying three thousand two hundred because there are little little ones i did i didn't take it from my source seed money i want the business to grow so if you give me money for pure water before two or three months i will begin bottled water business from that one you gave me that's what makes a woman wise remember that women are synonymous with wisdom so learn it today that once it starts entering september if you haven't bought all that you need the only thing that should be remaining should be perishable things that you don't have to. so even if tomato is three thousand five you can afford it and it won't mean anything to you shop and buy things between august september he doesn't give you money why are you there don't you make money is it not your home must it be him let's think Use your money sort it out when he now gives you you make up does it make sense that's what i do i'm not telling what other people do me standing here that is what I do. Okay, go ahead. She wants to ask. Hello. Okay, okay. Mom, in the first place, you answered the God bless you. But I don't think he was talking about moons. Even if you ask in January, they will not give. That is certain. So, that's not my problem. But the issue is now, when it becomes a routine, that it's like being expected to do it year after year, days after days. I heard you say that sometimes you cry. Because I did. That's what actually I'm trying to Before you proceed, one thing about men is that any time you wake up and you want to start helping them, they decline and they leave it for you. Men are good in doing that. If you start picking the children's clothes to begin to do it, they will naturally abandon it for you. So that's how men do. No, men do it more. Men do it more. Eh? Say that again. That's, how, that's what men do. Anyone they see, it's not their nature. No, God didn't make you that way. Anytime a woman starts picking some particular thing now, the man will naturally leave it for the woman. But you see me, I go get them from you. I'll be waiting. The day I will see an opportunity to get it from you, you will give it to me. Because that I'm helping you does not remove your role in that thing. So, re-strategize. Re-strategize. We are strategists and we know how to get it done. Say it January. February say it, I don't have. Okay, remember it March. And when they want to say I don't have, they say it angrily. So stop getting angry, oh. The earlier you stop getting angry, the better. Because you will not use anger to make me not to say it. I'll keep saying it until you give it to me. Thank this you, one, women, women are raising their hands. But please, my second question. Like, I used to see unbelievers. People will call unbelievers. Maybe, you no, know, sometimes the man will hit money. Give the wife, like, at least, let me say, 50,000. Mommy, just use this one, take care of yourself. That money is not described. So not label for anything. Just even be use this. You understand? Or the white man goes out, that's favor him today. He's coming back with a dinner gown. I want to know, believers husband, do they used to do things like that? The children of the the children of the world are always wiser than the children of God. And it is an error. Let me tell you that there was a time my uh, my husband uh, sold um, um, a land, a property that their father gave them. 
And so he got his own share many years back. And he got his own share of about five or maybe five point something million. In my heart, I said, hey, this man will say, oh, this thing that my wife has been doing all this, why? Now, let me give her, what is 50,000? You hit money, you're giving me 60,000. Are you stingy? What is 50,000 naira? So, I was believing, I said my husband would just say, in my mind, honey, this thing was in 2010. I said my husband would just come and say, well, take this 100,000 and buy anything you want, not feeding money. So I waited one day, no comment. The second day, no comment. I said, ah, what is he waiting for? The third day. So I went to him. He said, let the money cool down. I said, it's been cooling since three days. The money has been cooling. Then he now brought out the one bundle. I hope he's not watching me. He brought out one bundle. And started counting. He counted. And he gave me 15,000. One five. I said, honey, what is this? He said, honey, use it. I said, thank you. Don't worry. I don't need it. Is that what you're going to give me? I thought you would say, where is that my wife that I've been praising? He said, honey, we want to use it to build a house. I said, I know. Chebi, the house is our own. By the way, we have one of the best houses. He said, we want to use it to buy. I said, honey, I'm not talking about house. I'm talking about me. That day, I made up my mind to make she money. The day I wrote a check of one million for him. When I wanted to give it to him, I started counting the number of check, he laughed. So it's not only Oga. Most men are like that. But you know the truth. Look for a way and collect your money back. There's always a cool of the day. There is always a cool of the day. Eh? Or the man, or the woman. Oh, oh, they are the first to go to heaven. Look for a way. Don't steal. Oh. Don't take what he didn't give you. See, if I want you to give me something, you will give it to me. I will stay on you. When, um, who was the person who talked about not remembering birthday? Let me tell you how they started celebrating my own. Yes, it was you. My husband will forget his own birthday. Yeah. Most men, I told the most men are like that. So I told him, sir, you, you can forget your own, no. But he gave chef unke. You will not forget my own. And on that day, you will give me gifts. Plan it and don't make me know that you're planning it. You think he didn't hear? On that 23rd August, I saw that they brought back keyboard in the house. My son knows how to play keyboard. So he was even 13 at that time. My daughter was singing. I was sleeping. I now heard them playing the sound of keyboard. Happy birthday to you. Like my daughter told me I should do a surprise birthday for her. That I should bring balloon. I should bring trumpet and then I should call her. I said it's not a surprise anymore. Since you're now the one telling me what to do. Nemo will say surprise. She says she wants a surprise. And then the way they do it for me, I sh they should be blowing the trumpet. Then she will now come down. I said, you already know. So it's not a surprise. So I woke up and I saw that there was a bundle of 50,000 naira by the side of my bed. Happy birthday, honey. I for keep quiet. Oga, let me tell you one of the ways to surprise your wives and to make the home exciting. Write a paper, bring a paper, write it on the bed and say, I have a surprise for you. Fold it. It is in the kitchen. Fold it. Now go to the bathroom. Fold it. Go to the parlor under the chair. Fold it. Return back to the bedroom. Fold it. Check under the television. You now bring out a check 
of 100,000. Or oh God, do it, you will not change. Heaven will not break. So you do it and fold and fold. Make her run around and tell her, I have a surprise for you. That's it. And she will open it. It is in the kitchen. You need to see her run. Tika, 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 go to the kitchen. At that moment, you're getting ready for lovemaking in the afternoon, in the night. Make it sweet. She will run to the kitchen and then she will bring a paper and open it. I'm joking. It's not here. Go to the bathroom where you keep your soup. She will run and go to the bathroom and then she will open it. Surprise, surprise. It's under the chair in the parlor. She will run. At the time she's doing all of that, the body is changing. Body is getting wet. Excitement has taken her over. She will go under the chair. She will look for it. And now, let me tell you the surprise. Come back to the bedroom. And she will go to the bedroom. And then she will see it under the television. Check of 100,000. Ime If you do it, you will not die. That is one of the ways. Has pastor done it for you before? By the way, come. Come, mama. How does he show you love? I did he ask you? I did ask you. I asked. In a special way. Yes, yeah. Very ah, very rich. It exceptionally. exceptionally. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, uh, I have something to say. Okay. You see, this uh, one where you talk last night, you be like, uh, where is that? Uh, um, Wait in that way you like to watch that uh, film. Not cut. Z word. Eh? This thing looks like Z word. And in this uh, Tinubu regime, <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, even the person you want. Is it the money? He bought the money and the money. If you cannot keep money, keep perfume, keep antiperspirant, keep um, biscuits. Can woman also do it? Both ways. Both ways. And then let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, by the grace of God, our auditorium is about to be built and it will be built in record time, in months we will finish building. Now, one of the um, structures in the auditorium is love clinic. I will be admitting couples who don't know how to kiss, who don't know how to make love, who don't know, I will show them how to. And one of the things they taught us in PhD is blue film. Hold on, so you don't take it out of context. When your husband does, it's not having erection. And you, you've tried, they've given medication. It might be something that has to do with the mind, psychology. We bring them into the room and we play. We use it to wake them up and then we withdraw. It's not for them to watch it. Because sometimes there are things you look and you see, it has a way of waking the real you up. And so this is one of the... So most times, if you know those love movies that you can watch, you see Ram Senua kissing Genevieve, watch it together. Before, and as you're watching it, lean on his shoulder so that from there, the land can become green. You walk together to your bedroom or you stay there. May God bless your marriages. Hold your hands with your wife. Hold, if your husband is here, stand up. Face each other, eyeball to eyeball.
face each other. Don't look at me. Hold your two hands. Don't look at us. L look at yourselves. If your husband is not here, it's a pity. Hold your hands. Hold your hands. I look at the eyes. Keep your bag. Keep your bag, man. Hold hands. Us in here will also. Hold hands together. Look at each other. What do you call each other? Eh? Sugar. Saccharine. My love. Or I call him that name. The woman. Say, my love. I love you. Look at your eyes. Lego, do you see this one? They have already started romancing. <laughs> we have not even started. <laughs> Look, no, face each other now. Face each other, face each other. You see why I tell you don't carry children? You see them? Face each other fast, fast. Look at his eyes. The woman, tell him, my love, I love you. Oh, see your lips. No, stop laughing. Repeat after me. Please, no noise. Everywhere be quiet. Look at each other. Talk to your husband. The woman, now you are repeating after me. Call him what you call him. Saccharine, sugar, whatever. Call him. I love you. I remember that day. Under the mango tree. The day you told me you love me. I still love you. And I will forever be your wife. You mean the world to me. God bless the day I met you. My darling. My sugar. My saccharine. My love. My sweetheart. My sweetest. I love the way you make love to me. I love you. Now the men talk. Omalicham. Or the nobi. Wanyi marama. Elelebe joro. Oriakum. My sugar. You are too much. I love you. The mother of my children. You will remain blessed. We will continue to love each other. Everywhere quiet. Assemblies of God, listen to me. The next instruction must be fully obeyed. Whatever I say is what you will do. I see that is all right. Don't worry, hold on until you get home. Jiwayo. Look at each other. Mwa give him a powerful kiss. I don't. Eh, eh, eh. What is wrong? Oh. Don't worry. You will soon go home. <laughs> kiss him. Kiss her. Kiss, eh, eh. Camera. Look at. Look at these people. I love it. Is Pastor kissing his wife? No, stay there now. Stay with the kissing. I did not say stop. Stop laughing and kiss each other. Continue kissing. You will not go to hell. You see? You see these people, the way they are laughing. Daddy, have you kissed? Camera, come here. Camera, come here. Have you kissed? Have they kissed? I did not see. I want to see. Camera, please. I want to see. I want to see. They are not kissing, no. Daddy kiss. Father, we thank you. These families are blessed. These families are blessed. The devil will never attack your family. You shall continually dwell in peace and harmony. It shall be well with you. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, please, I want you to apologize to your wife. In any way I've offended you, forgive. Look at her. 
and tell her that. Apologize to your wife. Please fast, fast. My time is up. Let go your member. See the way I said they should hold hands together. They are not even holding hands together. Apologize to your wife. Wives, have you forgiven? Eh? You have not forgiven. Eh? Okay, they are not apologizing. Oga, Apol Tell her directly. Eh? You say you have not offended. Have you apologized? Please, from now till three days, look for a beautiful gift and give her. I, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. From now till three days, please give her. Women, what do you want as a gift? What do you want? Eh? Indian George. Sir, you must buy Indian George. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Eh, eh, in your color. In your color, because buy a special gift for your wife now women look at her sir please my mouth has put me in trouble talk to your husband don't look at me say my mouth has put me in trouble severally but i ask you to forgive me in all the ways i have derailed i've insulted you i've done what you say i shouldn't do my love i am sorry I'm going to give you a special gift tonight by 12 midnight. My body is your own. Have your way. Have your way. You want a physical gift? Okay, no problem. But tonight, I will give you whatever that will make you happy. And in three days, I will give you a special gift. May God bless your union. And may you keep working stronger and stronger. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Ghost. Say the Amen louder. Go ahead, put your hands together for Jesus. Have your seat for a few minutes before we shut down. For a few minutes, please, please, please. Engineer, please, for a few minutes. Biko, 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 Biko. I know we have spent time, but then it's worth it. I want us to show our appreciation to the woman of God. What do we say to her? Has her coming been beneficial to us? Is it a waste of time? Did we do anything wrong going far to the east to bring her? Thank you so much, ma. God bless you. It's always good to bring people who are good in their area and they come to do what they know how to 